and the calls 9584 size 16 from 1950s that's what it looks like so a size 16 would have been a bust 34, a waist 28, a hip 37. And um, I'm a size 18 today, so I had to do some Frankenstein stitching in order to upgrade it. And I did my upgrading calculations in the learning curve that I am. So here we have the pattern layout. I'm going to talk to you about it. This is the most complicated pattern I have done so far, but you can see why the 50s patterns are so much more detailed. This was actually a one size pattern. Um, some of this, the actual pattern pieces there and the additional six inches or so is what I had to do to up, upgrade it. So I'm learning upgrading. I'm gonna see if it works. I had to make notes because I was getting all confused. The sewing pattern talks a bit about what to do, but when this is how they show you what you're cutting out and don't really tell you otherwise, I decided I needed to write it down on a piece of paper. Here's the instructions. So luckily all the pieces were there. I got the cover, the instructions. This is how to make um, shoulder pads, which I don't think I'm going to make. Those are the pockets. So the outside of the pocket have um, a welt and then the inside pockets. These are the collars. I had to add another six inches to the collars. This is the back with the lining, the front, the front facing, the front interfacing, and the front lining are all here. And these are the sleeves. They have a front sleeve and a back sleeve. You need lining and fabric. And then they have a cuff that goes on the end of the jacket. This is the most pins I've ever used as well. The most pieces I have to take care of and not lose. The most instructions I have to follow. The fabric's like a corduroy and it's the same on both sides. So I gotta really watch I don't get mixed up with what side I'm using and the lining. This woman was selling, at a garage sale, she's a seamstress and she was selling bags of fabric. So I got three bags of fabric for $20 and this was included and it was enough to make this coat. The one other good thing I like about this pattern is the fact that someone had made it before. This was all pre-cut. I didn't have to cut it from the original pieces of pattern paper. So someone's made this coat and enjoyed it and now it's my turn. 1952 to 2019. This is a 67 year old pattern. Oh my god, I'm starting to feel old. That is wonderful. Do not throw out your patterns. Please donate them to any charities or schools. Something I started was a work box. So everything in here is what I'm working on. So I have my fabrics, my threads, my pattern pieces, because I'm always running around. I put things down and I don't remember where I put them. So whenever I'm not working on something, I'll throw it in here, which is my work box. So the darts on the two fronts and slit them open for heavier material and Iron them down. Buttonhole and two darts. Step one and two. So I have the welts underneath and the pockets on top with the line right here. Not yet cut open. Welts and pocket. I like this seam above the, above the chest. Look how it brings the coat in here. I like the pockets how I thought this was going to go down, but it actually goes, it was down to sew, but then it actually goes up. So you can actually slip your hands in. That turned out good. I'm liking my swing coat. 
So we seem to have a problem. Puns totally intended. So and seem. <laughs> Looks like when I upscaled the coat, I didn't upscale the facing. So this line here actually needs to go all the way up to here. So I'm going to add another piece to the interfacing and I'm going to have to find the facing as well. So I've taken my handy dandy pattern piece that I made, line up the pieces and now it'll go all the way up. And I'm going to add it to the interfacing and facing and I realize there's going to be a seam on the facing. I'm just going forward. I'm learning. It's okay. Let's just do it. Well, back in 1953, they did padding stitches. Padding stitches. I can do that. Then, it asks for one quarter inch wide twill tape. I went to my box of goodies. Turns out I have twill tape which is going to go along this part of the coat. Twill tape, twill tape, I got some twill tape. Never heard of it before, but I got it. But I did my first lining and I know now that I should have kept extra pattern, extra fabric like rolled a little bit here and not so tight because it does pull on the bottom. When I was doing the welt, which was a new thing for me, um, they kind of tell you to cut the sides. So the first one I did it without cutting the sides and it turned out actually really good. And then I thought, I'm gonna try to follow the instructions and be true to the instructions. Well, didn't I cut too far and I ended up with a bigger hole? <laughs> I tried to fix it and I'm like, just keep going. Please don't stop over this. So we did a buttonhole. It was with a binding, so for binding, cut on the bias strip, one and a half inches wide, three quarter inches long. Get on the buttonhole, base binding over marking. And then what I did was... It's too big. I know, that was the first thing I did wrong. Should have been half that width. But I'm like, just keep going. Well, that was my first bound buttonhole. Then, I saw, I know you saw the inside. What happened was, I graded all of it except for the facing and I had this big white hole here and I like I have to cover up the hole with more fabric which I did I hit it I kind of like hit it the hole I didn't have enough to cut another facing so there's another error so we have the hem one the bun hole two this the welt three four is the shoulders yeah I got caught because the shoulder was too big it's a big coat on me I shouldn't have made it as big as I did and I tried to fix it by pinching it in. This side turned out great. So I'm like, okay, let's go do the other side. Not, not so good, not so happy, but kept going. I love the cuffs on the sleeves. That's fun. The collar is not long enough. See how it pinches up? It didn't do that. So I should have made, see how the collar pinches up on the photo? It doesn't do that here, so I should have went longer on the collar. Here's what happens when you don't do your hem right. It buckles up. You can see it's too big in here. I think it should be like this. But I know when I did the upgrading, I didn't do the underarm part right. So that's a bit too long. But the pockets I would have done deeper as well. They're just shallow pockets to here. The cuffs I love. It is big. I went too big, but it's fun, right? I made a coat and I made a lining, I made a buttonhole. So this is my swing coat from 1950s. It's a swinging good time and it's pink, which is adorable. Here's the pattern, it's a recycled pattern that I picked up for $5, Canadian, and I got so much enjoyment out of it. That's the best part things I've picked up concerning sewing. Pretty much everything you're going to see here is from vintage secondhand stores, garage sales. A traveling iron, but this is how you click it on so that you can use it. 
but it actually goes inside. And that's how you travel with it and it clicks in. So that was pretty cool. Then I found this teapot. I love teapots, but when it was a sewing teapot, for a dollar, had to have it.